Now, not everybody has this power. Paul says, um, we who are spiritual interpret spiritual truths to those who are spiritual people, but there is a type of people who is not a spiritual people. They're a, they're a natural people. So in, in verse 13, I'm sorry, verse 14, it says, the natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, and the reason is because they are folly to him. That word accept is key, verse 14. He doesn't accept them. He comprehends them, sure. Logically, I get it, but it's not sweet to me. It's not something that I need. It's not beauty. Instead, it's foolishness. So what does the Holy Spirit really do? The Holy Spirit doesn't help you understand the concepts. Okay, you can be an unbelieving person and get the logical flow of the Christian faith. What the Holy Spirit does is he takes the truth of Christianity and he makes it beautiful. Makes it something that you, the Bible can only use sensory language to describe it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Hunger, the word like fresh, like a mother's milk. Most of you probably can't remember that, probably a bad analogy, but hunger it in that way, sensory language. That's what the Holy Spirit does, which means if the natural man doesn't receive the things of God, that means that as a church, you as an individual, you cannot entertain people into the kingdom. And I'm, I'm all for excellence. I'm all for really great music, and I'm, I think that's important, but that alone is not sufficient. Really great programs, really great children environments are, you know, they're good, they're important, but they're not essential. Only, the only essential thing, the thing without which nothing else happens is the Holy Spirit. You cannot argue people into the kingdom of heaven. I'm a big, big apologetics guy. I, and I love philosophy. I love, all, I love thinking hard. I like demonstrating proofs and evidence and, you know, winning arguments. That's one of my favorite pastimes. But you cannot argue people into the kingdom of heaven. Christian apologetics are not sufficient in and of themselves. You need the Holy Spirit. And you already believe this because anytime you go share the gospel with somebody, what are you doing? You're praying, God, open their eyes. God, give them, uh, give them the ability to see what I see because you know your words in and of themselves are not sufficient. You can't entertain them into the kingdom of heaven. You can't argue them into the kingdom of heaven. The only thing that produces true, abiding, genuine Christian faith is gospel proclamation empowered by the Holy Spirit, period. So you want an application? When you pray for your preacher, hopefully you pray for your preacher, whoever's preaching, or when you pray for your small group leader, pray, not that they just you know, are entertaining and don't put you to sleep, pray that their words are empowered by the Holy Spirit because without, which, without that anointing, nothing's gonna happen. You want an application? Give thanks to God for the Holy Spirit. Thank him, don't, don't run away from the topic, don't get weirded out by the topic. Learn everything that you can about what the Holy Spirit does in your life because he is that agent that does everything for you. Sleep better. <laughs> You can go to bed sleeping well because you know it's really not all about me. It's all about what God's gonna do through me by his Holy Spirit. What about you? I know for me, this past couple weeks, uh, I have been convicted. And I'll just be honest with you. You know, it's good for me to be honest with you. Um, I am a type A, a doer type of person. And therefore, I find it difficult to pray. I mean, I do it, but it's difficult for me. I find it difficult to to uh, surrender, to lean in, to, to not have to be the one who is responsible for everything. And so this text was very convicting for me as your pastor to say, uh, you ought to put as much time into praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit on the weekend service as you do preparing, it, preparing the details. What if you just spent half the time praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit as you do planning the service? What do you think would happen? I said, I don't know, I've never done it. Now that's, my, that's mine, what about you? Maybe it's your marriage. You know, you having a healthy marriage has not that much to do with you, has everything to do with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Are you here this morning and you've got fear in your life, fear that is debilitating, that, that, that cripples you? Maybe you've got shame and regret. You've got things in your life that are, that are causing you defeat instead of victory. 
That has everything to do with you cooperating with the presence of the Holy Spirit. You feel powerless this morning? How do you get that power? Through the Holy Spirit.